Choosing a new graphics card sure is a big decision. You want to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck, whether you're gaming hard or creating amazing content. But how do you know what works for your goal and setup? Well, let me help with that with today's countdown of the top 5 best GPUs that are really turning heads right now, with links to each in the description below. Let's begin. First, we have the AMD Radeon RX 6700, a real gem if you're looking for fantastic performance without draining your wallet. And it all comes down to its seriously impressive 1440p performance for its cost. Think about playing Elden Ring. It seems you can expect around 63 frames per second at 1440p. That's actually about 27% better than what many see from an RTX 3060, and this card generally comes in at a more attractive price point. It's also rocking 8GB of GDDR6 memory and has a relatively modest 160W TDP. That means it's a solid option if you're building a more compact PC and need to be mindful of power and space. Sure, it comes with its trade-offs. When it comes to ray tracing, the RX 6700 isn't the strongest contender. In a game like Cyberpunk 2077 with medium ray tracing, it looks like it pulls around 28 FPS, so its real strength lies in traditional rasterization performance. Also, that 10GB of VRAM, while decent, can get a bit tight in some newer titles. For example, Horizon Forbidden West at 1440p can apparently use up to 9.8GB, leaving you with very little headroom. So who is this card really for? It's ideal if you're a budget-conscious gamer aiming for smooth 1080p or even 1440p gameplay, as long as ray tracing isn't a top priority priority for you. Yet, looking at user feedback, many give it high marks for reliability. And then, we've got a real powerhouse, even if it's from the previous generation, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Super. Now, you might think, previous generation? But trust me, this card is still incredibly formidable, especially for serious gamers and creators. It's essentially a refreshed version of the original RTX 4080, but it comes with some nice spec improvements and, often, a more competitive price. That makes it a really attractive option if you don't necessarily need the absolute bleeding edge of the latest architecture. So, what's under the hood? The 4080 Super boasts 16GB of super-fast GDDR6X memory on a 256-bit bus. In simple terms, that's plenty of muscle for smooth 4K gaming, and demanding professional creative tasks. One area where this card really shines is ray tracing, thanks to NVIDIA's optimized RT cores. And let's not forget its tensor cores, which deliver fantastic DLSS upscaling. This is a clever tech that can give you a significant boost in frame rates without a noticeable drop in visual quality. And for those of you who are content creators, the 4080 Super's NVNC encoder is also a big plus, offering excellent performance for streaming and recording. Besides, it consumes 320 watt on average, making it compatible with 50 watt PSUs. It really strikes a great balance if you need professional grade power but aren't quite ready to stretch the budget for the very latest series. Plus, with mature driver support and proven reliability, it represents excellent value for a high end system. Next, we have a really compelling mid range option the NVIDIA RTX 5070. This card makes a strong case for itself, especially if you're eyeing impressive performance without venturing into the absolute top tier prices. Now, what's the big deal with the 5070? It's built on NVIDIA's latest architecture, and that means it really shines in areas like ray tracing and AI-assisted tasks. Think about features like DLSS. That's where this card gets a real competitive edge. It's packing 12GB of fast GDDR6X memory on a 192-bit bus, which is plenty for fantastic 1440p gaming and even dipping your toes into entry-level 4K. Plus, with 5th Gen RT and Tensor cores, it's reportedly about 68% faster in ray tracing than an RTX 4070 Super. That's a significant jump. The interesting part is how it handles image quality. For gamers who value NVIDIA's software, the combo of DLDSR with DLSS 3.7.0 seems to be a winner. People have noted that DLDSR at 4K on a 1440p screen with DLSS performance mode can look sharper and run smoother than alternatives like FSR on quality mode, which can sometimes have a shimmery look. For instance, in Alan Wake 2, DLSS 3.7 apparently produces 15% sharper textures than FSR 3.0 at 1440p. It's also quite energy efficient, running cooler and drawing less power than some rivals, making it a good fit for most mid-tower builds. If you're a content creator, the NVENC AV1 encoding is a great perk for streaming. The main thing to keep in mind is that while 12GB of VRAM is good, it might get a little tight if you're pushing Ultra 4K textures in some demanding titles. Nonetheless, it's a great mid-range option to consider. At number 2, we have the AMD Radeon RX 9070 a card that really shakes things up, offering a fantastic balance of performance and price. AMD has made some pretty big changes with their RDNA 4 architecture here. They've actually gone back to a monolithic design, moving away from the chiplet approach of RDNA 3, and this seems to have brought some serious performance gains. 
Each compute unit in the RX 9070 is reportedly delivering double the ray tracing performance and up to quadruple the AI performance compared to previous generation. That's a huge leap. This card is packing 56 compute units and 16 gigabyte of speedy 20 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory. All this horsepower means it apparently outperforms the older RX 7800 XT by about 30% overall. We're talking 26 to 31% faster in standard rasterization games and an even more impressive 40 to 42% improvement in ray trace. And for AI workloads, the gains are even bigger, ranging from 38% to 73%, depending on the task. For 1440p gaming, this card seems to average around 139 FPS across various AAA titles. While it might trail something like the RTX 5070 by a small margin in raw numbers, it often comes in at a more attractive price point. It's also quite efficient, with a 220-watt TDP, which is notably lower than some competitors, while still delivering comparable rasterization. Plus, AMD has also boosted its video engine's encoding quality and performance, making it a solid pick for streamers and creators. The main consideration here is that, while its ray tracing is much improved, it might still be a bit behind NVIDIA's top offerings in that specific area, and it doesn't have a direct hardware equivalent to DLSS for upscaling. But for pure rasterization punch and high refresh rate 1440p gaming, the RX 9070 is a very strong contender. And finally, our number one pick, the undisputed champion of graphics cards right now, is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090. If you're looking for the absolute peak performance, this is it. This card is, simply put, a monster. It builds on the already incredible foundation of the RTX 4090 and just takes everything to a whole new level. We're talking about exceptional frame rates even at mind-boggling 8K resolution, and it handles ray tracing with an efficiency that's truly remarkable. It's all powered by NVIDIA's latest Blackwell architecture and comes with the newest iteration of DLSS, version 4.0. The RTX 5090 is equipped with a massive 32GB of GDDR7 memory running on a super-wide 512-bit memory bus. That translates to an absolutely staggering 1,792 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. It also boasts 21,760 CUDA cores, which is a 33% jump over the RTX 4090. This much VRAM and processing power is perfect for complex AI tasks, professional-grade rendering, and of course, next-generation gaming at its finest. Performance-wise, it's just in a league of its own. In synthetic benchmarks, it's reportedly outperforming the RTX 4090 by around 21% on average, and that can jump up to 50% in workloads that really leverage DLSS 4.0's multi-frame generation. For ray tracing, it's said to achieve around 88 FPS at 8K in a demanding game like Cyberpunk 2077 with path tracing enabled. That's just wild. Content creators will also love the dual NV Enc encoder, which can slash 8K video export times by up to 40%. Now, all this power does come with a hefty 575 watt TDP, but NVIDIA has apparently designed an advanced dual slot cooling system to manage it effectively, even under sustained heavy loads. Of course, a card like this is aimed at professionals and enthusiasts who prioritize raw power above all else and are prepared for the investment. You'll also need a beefy setup to support it, including a substantial power supply and a chassis that can fit its size. But if you want the best of the best, the RTX 5090 is where it's at. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to subscribe to Master iTech for more tech content like this. Catch you in the next video.